So I'm not going back and forth with a man who thinks that they should be in my position. If you want to be in my position, get in my position. Do you believe that? Bluff City Media presents The Anthony Sane Show on YouTube at Bluff City Media. Stepping up to the microphone is your host, Anthony Sane. Acknowledge me. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Anthony Sane Show. This is, of course, your host, Anthony Sane. Here in the Bluff City Media Studios, my man, Kenny Stubblefield, is behind the glass. Kenny, what's going on, my brother? Well, the day started out nasty and gross, but now it's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. Uh, beautiful weather outside, man. Beautiful weather for sure. Got a special guest today, my guy, Mike Blevins, man. If you don't know who he is, don't know, don't know the name, you've seen his work, man. He does all the video stuff for the Memphis Grizzlies. He's the director, of course, of the Marcus All documentary, which I'm sure all you guys have seen. If you guys have seen Beyond Grit, the super, super great series, uh, one debuted yesterday. Check that out. Yeah, the uh, behind the scenes with Mark. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna be he's gonna be in the studio today. I'm sure there's gonna be a great interview, man. I know, I know you're super excited, Kenny. A video editor yourself, somebody <laughs> who can speak your language, is gonna be in the studio. We had uh, uh, we we've, we've had other guests who who spoke your language, but I know this man. <laughs> Like no other is going to be able to speak your language with you. I'm going to try to keep it chill because I know last time I kind of went a little bit above and beyond with the MMA guys. So yeah. I'm going to try to keep it chill. I'm going to, I'm going to try He's to keep about, it chill. Uh, yeah, you can be speaking a whole other language when them dudes come in. I'd be like, all right, bro, <laughs> enough. <laughs> but, but yeah, my guy. Anthony starts tapping his watch. Right. Like, hey, bro. I'm looking at my watch, playing games on the phone, all that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> my guy, Mike Blevins, is here. I'll have my water bottle just in case I, I'll just probably sit back and hydrate while y'all are getting into your video editing while nerd talk. While we're nerding out a little right, bit. Exactly, yep. exactly. I'm sure there's going to be a super exciting guest, man. Uh, Mike Blevins, of course. Um, like I said, the, the director of the uh, Marcus Hall documentary. Uh, we're also going to talk about uh, the loss of O.J. Simpson. Everybody's been giving this dude the biggest middle finger in the world. <laughs> you said loss like it's a – is exactly. it a loss? Here we go. Yeah, man, dude, people been on O.J.'s ass, man. Like most most time you respect the dead for like, oh, screw that crap. Everybody's been on O.J.'s ass. We're going to talk about uh, the passing of O.J. Simpson uh, today. Uh, something else. Oh, my guy Nate Robinson. We're gonna talk about him. Wild story uh, for the three pointer, as well. Uh, plus some other things we got going on. I got an instant question. I'm actually for inside the same brain as well. Sponsored by our good friends at Creative Sig. Uh, as far as relationships and what do you do after you break up? That's the kind of stuff you can get here on Anthony the Sane Show. Uh, Kenny Stubblefield. But since the last time we talked, since the last time we had a show, the Grizzlies played another miserable game uh, last night. <laughs> Oh, man, tough stuff. Ask me the last time I watched a full Grizzlies game. Uh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we'll be talking about stuff. I'll be like, all right. Well, I didn't even know it was on last Right, night. exactly. Uh, Grizzlies played Cleveland, uh, lost the game. Uh, we, they were up pretty – they had a nice little lead in the first quarter. Uh, Jake LaRavia was going crazy throughout the game. I want to say he had 32 points. G.G. Jackson, man. Shout out to G.G. Jackson, who <laughs> – who is uh we found out is a drummer at his dad's church. <laughs> that is I thought that was a a, a dubbed track no. over that. That's no. actually him. And I made some phone calls because I know one of the guys that posted one of the videos. I said, bro, what the hell was happening? Like like Gigi's dad's not from here. Like what what was that? Like he said, Oh man, he said the church. Some of the members took a good old church trip down to Memphis to uh to watch Gigi play. <laughs> and then they uh decided to just have they asked could somebody could they use their their church? Is have a good old, you know, midweek church service. I was like, hey, why not? You know what I mean? So <laughs> Gigi hopped on the drums. He was singing. Dad, Gigi's dad preached to the, 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 the members of the church to travel to go see Gigi play. They just had a good old impromptu church service. I was like, bro, that best look random as hell. If that ain't the most. <laughs> Six, nine ass <laughs> drummer. <laughs> Gigi Jackson. I'm like, bro, what, what am I watching, bro? <laughs> Then Drew Hill's writing about it. I'm like, bro, like Drew, what are, you, what are you doing? Were you there? Did he show up? I said to Michael, why your black you ass were, with yeah. Why your ass with his church? You remember the the Giannato Penny uh, where he watched him watch the game? Yeah. <laughs> that was Drew Hill. You playing with God. I remember, trying to get a damn story. For sure, a damn story. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, but since the last time we talked, <laughs> Jake LaRavia went off last night, and people wanted to know my opinion. I had people blowing my phone up. Oh, my God. Oh, is he still trash saying? Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> if you want my honest opinion. Not much has changed about how I feel uh, how I feel about Jake LaRavia. But I'll give you guys a quick summary. Um, you know, I've, I've got my jokes off about Jake LaRavia. He's a very easy target, bro. He, if Like, I, I talk about how people can see themselves in a player, right? And he's like, okay, I can see me doing it. 
Uh, I could, I could. Jake LaRavia looks like any other dude that you would like pick on, right? He looks like a pick, pick onable dude. You know what I mean? So I have my fun uh, getting my jokes off about Jake LaRavia, who I think is not a good basketball player. Like I'm, I'm fine with saying it. Um, do I? Am I happy for him? Yes. I, anything that gives that man confidence or make him feel like he's the player that belongs in the NBA, all those things are cool. Um, he's a guy that we knock for not having confidence and all these type of things, and I give him props for being able to do those type of things. But this is where I dissect what I'm actually seeing. Or not seeing because I ain't watched a second of the game last night. But when I look at, you know, I look at how I see, I've watched highlights of this stuff and I've seen his box score, and, you know, 32 points, all those type of things. And I saw my good friend Peter Edmiston <laughs> who gave you a list of everybody who's had these ridiculous scoring games in April, right? <laughs> exactly. Come on. And the list was was it was hilarious, including Malachi Flynn. Uh, Malachi had 50, Flynn had 50. And it scored six points since then. Is he an all-star? Like, what? Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So here's my thing, and this is how this is how I look at basketball and how I view Jake LaRavia, right? Um, Jake LaRavia is a guy that in a regular NBA season, he's a guy that you would ask to be a guy who could come in and just kind of be, of course, the fifth player on the court. He'll be the worst. Any any lineup that he's in in a regular situation, he's going to be the worst player on the court, right? But he's a guy that you want to be able to, you know, come off the of screens, knock down uh, spot-up jump shots, these type of things, right? I just want to see him do that, Kenny. I don't care that he's – because those situations like last night and situations like most nights this season – We've been we've been a G League team playing against pros. Like that's just honestly what it's been. It's a it's the equivalent of a G League team playing against a pro team, right? And in those type of situations where Jake Laravia has to be featured, he has a long running record of being able to do what we saw last night. And that scored 25, 30 points in the game, playing with the other G League cal- caliber guys, right? He's he's and we forget these guys are still professional basketball players. They're way better than me and you. They're way better, better than anybody you've probably ever seen play basketball. Like, you can put Jake LaRavia in the gym with guys that you call hoopers, and he would tear their ass up. Like, that's just that's what it is, right? So it's no shock to me to see a guy of his skill level take 11 shots and make eight of them. Like, I don't, I'm not amazed by it. Like, that's something that – they're pro basketball players. There's something that they're able to do. I've seen these guys, <clears throat> you know, in, in closed gyms make 90 out of 100. Yeah. Or 95 out of 100, you know what I mean? D. Wilkes, who was, I guess, right. a few about a month ago, right? I've seen D make damn near 40, 53 pointers in a row. In a war- I've seen him do this, right? Like, these guys are able to knock down those type of shots. Speaking of, not to totally derail, congrats, D. Wilkes. Oh, my boy, D. Wilkes, man. A new coach of, uh, of St. George's. Uh, he, he left FACS. We got to get Dion again, too, yes, we man, do. Uh, very soon well, while he's in the offseason. Uh, big, big time move on my boy D. Wilkes. But um, this is what I'm trying to say, man. It's the difference between – and when you're talking about a guy like Jake, who we all say has these confidence issues, right? It's the difference between being able to knock down shots or score at a high level when you're playing with a bunch of other guys who can't really play or they're G League level players plus GG – <laughs> it's just a bunch of G League dudes and, and, and Gigi, right? And you. It's the difference between being able to score when you're act, you're featured and you're allowed to mess up and you know you're going to get 30 minutes in that game and all those type of things. It's the difference between being productive on that level and then being productive when you're asked to come in and play 12 minutes or 10 minutes. And if if I break down somebody off the dribble, can I kick it out to you and you knock down that shot? Like, that's what we need Jake LaRavia to be. He won't – there's no situation where we need Jake to do what he did last night. You're speaking some real truth here right now. But there are situations where you yeah. need Jake to be able to come in, uh-huh. like not warm up, I need you to be ready when you come in, and I give you this shot, and you knock that shot down. Mm. And then there's an, there's also a difference between the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, actual NBA – well, because I, I got that. Well, he was playing against a real NBA team. Like, that team is good. Like, they had all their, they had their guys or whatever. There's a difference between the Cleveland Cavaliers playing against the Memphis Grizzlies, like John and them, Jaron and them, and playing against the Memphis Hustle. Right. Right? So there's a different level of intensity. Game planning. All right. That all these of type of things, yeah. right? And and if I have a lineup where, I, where it's uh, uh, Jake LaRavia, Gigi, and some dudes out there, teams are going to be kind of play you however. Stock. Right. Like but stock if, play. Yeah. But if it's John, Jaron, Bain – 
They've Vince Williams, yeah. Brandon Clark, whoever out there, Donovan Klingon, right. whoever you want, you know, whatever you want to say. And then you got Jake out there too. Yeah. Jake LaRavia is going to be food because they're going to target him. They're yeah. going to hunt him on defense, right? But like, he didn't get that last night because it's like, dude, we don't, we're going to beat y'all about 20. All we got to do is, is, is not screw around for about 10 minutes and the game's going to be over. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's junk basketball right now, bro. And it's, and I, I made a decision to stop watching these games because it's, it's just, it's, it's I, not, don't, I don't want to be out here talking about Jake LaRavia is the third best shooter on our team. Like, we, that's the, it's the dude who said it on Twitter. It's all right, that. man, relax. I saw that. We know, you know what, what I mean? we need to know moving forward. Jake LaRavia is a career 33, 33% shooter, and he's shooting 33% on the season after going 8 of 11 mm-hmm. last night. So his numbers, are, they, he took a bump after what he did last night. He's not a good shooter, bro. Like, he's does he have the capability to be? Sure. And he yeah. was labeled to be that coming out of college. But if I I'd rather I would be much more excited if there's a game where Jake LaRavia is playing with actual other NBA talent, guys, Ja, Jaron Bain, whoever, and he scores uh ten points on no or eleven points on three, three of, five. of three of five from three. Three of five from three. That's what'll get me excited. Yeah. If he's a guy that can knock down threes like that, um in in the actual flow of a real game. Um, you're speak. I mean, you're speaking like that's just, that's, you're, that's, that's, you're, what we're watching now ain't basketball, yeah. bro. You're like, speaking a language that I don't think a lot of folks. Yeah, folks look at box. We got a yeah. lot of box score warriors, right? Because no. man, Junior Lofton scored forty something, and, yeah. and a year ago from yesterday, right? Like it was literally a year ago. Yeah, and nothing about that made me think think that we had. Um, uh, we, we had someone. Little l- 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 Nicole Jokic. I didn't think that's what we had. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I didn't think we had six, eight Jokic out there because he scored 42. Right. Because there's nothing about that that translates to what his actual role would be for this team. Yeah. And when we started giving Junior Lofton real NBA minutes against real NBA players, he looked like a non-NBA player. Yep. And that's what – that's what the last time I saw Jake with real NBA players, he looked like a non-NBA player. Yeah. Now – I've had people say, well, he could be your 12, 13 man. Okay, cool. I don't care. Like, what, is that, what does that even mean? Why are we discussing You that? know what I mean? But that's cool. But if a team says, hey, we'll take Jake LaRavia in a trade for this player or to make hit that roster spot disappear and y'all don't have to give up a second-round pick, I would throw him in that too. Like, there's, Absolutely. It, that's pretty much what he is. Now, would I be super ec- ecstatic if Jake LaRavia turns into a Max Struss type guy on this team or a guy who could just come in off the bench, a Duncan Robinson type who can make five, six, seven threes in a game like that, in a real basketball game, when it's the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Memphis Grizzlies and and this team is trying to knock our head off and we're trying to knock their head off, I would be super excited for him and for this team because I'm a, guess what, I'm a Grizzlies fan. But there's nothing I'm seeing right now that yeah. makes me think that I should be excited about Jake LaRavia because I'm still seeing him just struggle with basic concepts of – basketball you know mm-hmm. what I mean but uh yeah man like I said um season's almost over Kenny and it's time to start talking off season because I, I'm so done with all of this man I'm I'm tired of having conversations about who's better Scottie Pippen Jr. or Jordan Goodwin <laughs> like I don't give who a cares? damn about either one of those dudes to be honest with you man I'm tired of all that stuff I'm tired of Lamar Stevens talk I'm tired of I mean I'm a little excited about what my boy uh wasn't that could be because because if he if you think he's good that could kind of um um the big man, uh, Jemison. Like, if, if you think he's going to be – if you think he's a solid rotation, lower rotation level dude who can spell you some minutes at, at at the five, it may change how you look at some other stuff. If you really think you got something to him. And you got Brandon Clark back, so it may it may change. Not saying you won't draft a big or you can't, you don't have to draft a big, or you, but you might not have to get another free agent big is what I'm trying to say. You might could go out and draft a Klingon in the draft and just be like, okay, we're going to ride with what we got. Like, I don't have to go get – another dude too type stuff so my expectation is that's that's not gonna happen yeah is that it's just it's all that, that's what i'm saying like but but i'm just saying no i feel you like these like nothing like crap basketball games are like are like really making people say some wild stuff bro. we got we got folks arguing over the 13th 14th yeah 15th. like who gives a damn like i i don't Rush care response, bro like yeah. <laughs> like i don't like like oh what you think about jake he's not a good basketball player but did you see the game no, but I saw he scored thirty two points. He went eight eleven from three. I and I think he's and he's he's shooting thirty three percent on the season. I think he's closer to being a thirty percent shooter than he is a seventy percent shooter. So that's all I got, bro. And I know people, you know, I'll, I'll take that and think I um, mean it one way or I'm creating some narrative. I say the same shit about Zaire Williams, so y'all can say what you want to say. <laughs> Cause I've had I've had people like trying to I've like slick trying to imply like there's some racial element like why I'm jumping on uh, 
why I'm jumping on Jake or whatever, right? I'm the same dude who in the last few weeks I've said, oh, here's my list of guys I love the Grizzlies to draft. Donovan Klingon, Shepard, and uh, – and, uh, Dalton Connect. Dalton Connect, right? <laughs> so, yeah, Wait a exactly. Second. Wait a second. Exactly. <laughs> now, if you see me out there pretending like I knew something about Alex Sar, like y'all did with Luka Doncic a few years ago, then you can go there. But like, <laughs> I promise you that ain't the case. I don't, I don't know anything about Alex Sar. I'm not going to pretend to know anything about Alex Sar. Um, but, yeah, so – but, yeah, man, that's it. That's all I got. But uh, like I said, man, we're about to go to break. When we come back, Michael Blevins, he's going to come in, man. Super dope documentary he did on Marcus Sar. He's going to tell us about that. And hopefully he'll give us some, because you know it's two more coming, man. They got one for, for, for Tony. They got one for Mike. Got to be coming. Yep. Hopefully he'll tell us something about that. And I know you're going to get your shit off. Uh, yep. uh, I know you're going crazy over I'm there. I'm ready, man. But you'll see that and more here when we come back on the Enter the Saints show. See you guys in a minute. And that's what I was going to go ahead and warn everybody about that anyway. We are going to be more precautious on yeah, people 100%, this year. Yeah, 100%. You have and to. And we're going to peel back layers. I think it even extends past Jordan Brown, if we're being honest. I think it could extend to Javon Quinterly as well. But he had very good moments. But you look at what was said about him in the offseason, fair or not, yeah. by Nate Oates leaving Alabama. And you yeah. go, okay, oh, okay, maybe there was something there. After things. the way last year went... I don't think it's what were we saying about Jordan Brown when he committed? They could be the player oh of the year. Oh my gosh, player In of the, the year. Can I, no, I can't. Any of these guys that join this team, I can't just like take it at surface value and just no. say, oh yeah, that's. I have to do it to dig a little deeper. Dig deeper. Now, even if you dig deeper with PJ Haggerty, you feel fine. Yeah, exactly. But you dig deeper with Dane Danger. There's some, there's some concerning there's things. There's some things that, I, you know, I don't think are perfect. Tune into On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. After three entire, I think he made it through the third one. Yeah, yeah I don't know. He might have left with a quarter left in the third practice. Lou Esposito is gone already. We hardly knew ye. What are you going to do? I'm just proud of him because, you know, his dream was to coach at Memphis, and he hey, got his chance. He had it as a goal. He didn't say coach at Memphis for an entire season. Well, well I mean, first of all, already. when you're getting six times the pay just to go to Michigan, I think you do it. And nobody's going to sit here and blame him. I'm just, it sucks. We thought that that was a great hire. He was coming in. He was a co-defensive coordinator. He'd been a defensive coordinator before the FBS level. You know, you got Jordan, who's in his, really his first year of, yeah. at this level. Obviously, he'd been the D coordinator at UT Martin, but felt like that was a guy that was going to be able to help him out kind of go through his first season at the FBS level as a defensive coordinator. So I feel like it just sucks. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. Y'all, welcome back to the Anthony the Saints show. Told y'all at the beginning of the show, I had a very special guest, my guy Mike Blevins, man. I'm telling you, y'all seen it. Y'all seen this stuff, man. You seen Beyond Grit. You seen the Mike, the Marcus Hall documentary. You saw the Zach Randolph documentary. You seen all this shit on Grand City Media, man. He's the <laughs> man. A, a pleasure to have this brother in the city. I don't know how long we got him, Kenny. I ain't gonna lie to you. It feels like every year. Listen, like, like, nah, they man ain't coming back. <laughs> Universal Studios gonna right, come calling. Right, somebody better go get this dude. Nah, but you you might not know who Michael Blevins is. <laughs> yeah, but you go. But know. you've seen you've his seen work, his work. Maybe. I guarantee you've seen his work, man. Um, is it is it? Uh, I know you got an Academy Award, multi time Academy <laughs> Award winner. No. No? The regional Emmys. Regional Emmys. Regional Emmys. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. My guy, man. Emmys. Hey, Anthony, hey it's, it's Emmys we, to me, my guy. Where's, my, where's the Emmy for our show, man? What's going hey, on? Hey, they hating, bro. Hey, you know how it is, bro. <laughs> you know how it is. They hating, man, for sure. My boy, Mike uh, Blevins is in the building. Multi-time regional Emmy Award winner. How many of y'all got? None. So don't worry about it. But yeah, Mike, I, I'm a big fan of what you do, man. I think that you do things that are... It just seems like they're not supposed to be NBA stuff. Like this, it feels like we're watching like movie quality stuff, man. Like I said, we joke, we joked about, we feel like we get, we got you on borrowed time here. 
Like, I really feel like that. Like, I feel like <laughs> his brother is not supposed to be here. I think it's a pleasure to see his work. The Beyond Grit stuff, uh, of course, that we we tune in to. I know I stop my day when a new, new, a new one drops and I watch it. I can't. I think I've seen every single one of them, man. Just the way that you are able to capture things with your, your eye and just the way that you can direct and put these videos together is awesome. But before we get there, I've always wondered, because you see people, like you see John Morant and his story, you can kind of, okay, he played basketball all his life. I'm sure you always wanted to be an NBA basketball player or whatever, or you see a coach and you, their story makes sense. How did you get here? Because I'm sure you weren't a kid saying, hey, I want to be a bum-ass director for an NBA team. So how did, you, how did you get to where you are now? Well, I mean, if we got – if we went back uh, way back, mm -hmm. um, I remember uh, one of my earliest memories is we got like a family camcorder, right? Mm -hmm. And like uh, as a little kid, my uh, I would go to my grandmother's house and we would like uh, make movies and stuff like mm -hmm. that, right? And we're not editing anything, right? So it was like stop, start and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I always kind of wanted to do that. My parents were really um, good about, they just let me watch whatever shit I wanted to watch, mm -hmm. like, like a... You know, a young kid, I was watching Pulp Fiction, stuff like that. Right. So, like, I was seeing, like, high-end movies mm -hmm. and stuff then. And then when I was in high school, um, I was not good enough to make my basketball team. Um, <laughs> I went to a public school in Houston. My freshman class had, like, 1,100 people in it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we had probably on that basketball team probably, like, seven or seven Division One athletes on it. No chance to make it. Mm -hmm. So I just I did uh, the radio TV department the whole time there, um, and did behind. The, I had a really good, great uh, coaching staff for basketball and football, and they let me kind of do whatever I want, video wise. And then ended up at LSU, worked there the entire time. Mm -hmm. We won national title while I was there. We went to the Final Four with Big Baby and Tyrus Thomas mm -hmm. and them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Former um, Grizzly uh, Tyrus Thomas. Former, I, I, you know what? I just found that out the other <laughs> yeah. day when I was doing. He, he, he played real, with Mark for like a minute. Right? Yeah, it was kind of one of those kind of. It's one of those Chris Wallace. Somebody got hurt. Let's go find lightning in the bottle. Well, Chris type. was tight with uh, Garrett Temple's dad, mm -hmm. and he was you know kind of like a godfather to those group uh, of guys. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Um, and then um, went to LSU. <laughs> um, after that was over, interned at the Bears. Um, and that was, and I, I've gotten lucky where we've had uh, every team I've been a part of has had success or interesting stories. So like that year was like Jay Cutler, Brian Erlacher, Julius Peppers, Lance mm -hmm. Briggs, all that stuff. And then when the intern, internship was up, worked a year at the Astros, uh, which I guess I wasn't lucky. That was the worst baseball team in history where mm -hmm. each night there was a stretch for like a month where each night. We broke the record for the lowest attendance of franchise history. <laughs> Every night it gets worse. And then <laughs> it was that season that made them cheat, right? They were uh, like, we got to cheat we now. Got, hey, look, we got some good graphics. Bring the trash season. can out. Let's go. And then <laughs> it's got recording that bullshit. The streak, do ended, about this. <laughs> the streak ended on a firework night because everybody yeah. wanted to come see fireworks. So uh -huh. then, the, you know, we went Free hot dogs type shit. Um, and then I worked for the Niners. So those were the hardball years. Mm -hmm. So my first year we went to the Super Bowl. Oh, um, probably like... When uh, the ball went out of the end zone, the one that, to Crabtree, I'm probably like five or six yards away from it. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. On the field. Um, and I was there four or five years and then uh, came here. And my first year here was 16 17, so the last grid and grind year. Man. So, oh, wow. So I know, I mean, the, I was obviously an important part in the documentary. So that mm -hmm. one I know really, uh, really firsthand. Yeah, man, that's dope as hell, man. You mentioned the documentary, which is absolutely incredible. Um, Appreciate I, it. I called Kenny while I was watching it. I was doing play by play on Twitter while I was watching it. Kenny was like saying, "This is like, this ain't supposed to be free, man. This is supposed to be on Netflix." <laughs> That's exactly shit. right, man. Yeah, like, but for real though. So how do you how do you deal with the praise? Like, I, I'm sure there's I'm sure you don't get any negative feedback about this. I don't. I can't think of anything in the back. Oh, I do got some negative feedback. I'm gonna come <laughs> back to that in a minute because <laughs> it was it was one door y'all opened up. I'm like, I'd rather not know that <laughs> yeah. shit at all. Yeah, why? Just being honest with you. <laughs> but how do you deal with the positive feedback? Well, I I always uh, I probably shouldn't put that out there so people don't tweet at me on this. But <laughs> my, my favorite one I always bring up is like I th we had switched the intro song during the year because mm -hmm. I do the intro videos too, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I have a staff of six. But Forgot like, about that. Yeah, okay, yeah, but I'll edit the intro videos and like the big hype videos. Yeah, where like the Glorilla one. Mm -hmm. um, so you do all this stuff. Yeah, oh, that Glorilla Damn. one, man. That's... Okay, y'all. Yeah, you that dude. Yeah, man. you that dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, we. Uh, I remember somebody tweeted at me. It's like at Mike Blevins. 
everyone in section 114 hates the new intro song, Bring Back Drake. <laughs> Like the entire section, the whole section. They vote. What did they pass did out? Was like it a straw? They had a meeting like, after, after, the, after the show. Um, after the game. But yeah, I mean, it is awkward. Like I get. Um, I will say this. Like Mark's been talking about it a lot, mm-hmm. and I was interviewing Pete Pranica, and and you know Pete, you know we've been working together for like seven years at this point, so he knows me well. I was like, you know, of the of the team of those four guys, of uh, personality wise. Mark's most resembles mine, where it is awkward sometimes where people are like really yeah. positive on it because then it like creates pressure. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. what's the, you got two more to do. What's the next one right. to do? Like, <laughs> right. can you live up to it? Because uh-huh. the next ones are going to be really different. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully people like will get them and understand it. But yeah, I mean, it's, I thought, and I reminded um, my crew as we were finalizing it because when you finalize it, you're dealing with color, you're dealing with audio, different things like that, make sure the graphics are all right. And it was a stressful like week or so, right? And we knew the base the documentary was done at that point, mm-hmm. right? Other than the small details. And it's a pain in the ass to get to that finish line, but I remember reminding everybody, like, I think we did something really good here. Like I know we've now watched it twenty times and it gets annoying watching it twenty mm-hmm. times, but I think people are gonna react to it well. I didn't think it would be um this much. Emma a fiber. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, Emma get off for real though. Like I, I'm talking about crying real tears at the house, man. Yeah. It was just, there was just certain things the way you captured them, like seeing it through your lens. It was crazy. Like it's kind of like just seeing how much those two, those four guys were such a tight knit group. Four totally different dudes, man. Like and just the way that they came in and just were, were true brothers on their court. Like that whole thing was was incredible. And, and the stuff you showed. With Mark when he was uh, like outside of basketball stuff, like with St. Jude and mm-hmm. going to dig folks out the water and all that, like, yeah. all that stuff that you forgot about, man. You know what I mean? It's just an incredible story. I'm looking forward to more. Of course, we have two more guys who uh, have to have their jersey numbers retired. You know that TA one's gonna be right. Oh yeah, TA well, gonna be crazy. <laughs> TA gonna be wild. <laughs> They, they, they gonna show T.A. riding the bike down Lamar. Yeah. <laughs> like, that is, uh, that the is story one of the stories. <laughs> Where was he? He was going to what was the Payne's barbecue or something. He was about to about Payne's barbecue. He was going to uh, what's it? Was it? Sometimes uh, I forget the name. Pressure Wash. Was it Blue Monkey? Oh. Uh, that's kind of yeah, it. Ain't close to that. But I'm he trying to remember he was where on, he was going. Yeah, he was on but Lamar. But I mean, that's definitely gonna be. <laughs> one of the storylines. It might be Cap. What you say? You had two. You might. Just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. some so look down the road for the blue monkey. Right right <laughs> but yeah, but I've been the brass monkey on the, on the, <laughs> on Lamar and McLean or something. But no. But uh, speaking of those two, man, are there any previews you can let us know? Because is that like you can you know you can't go back to the past and record. This is footage you already have. Is there anything that you can kind of give us a hint of what we might see in those two guys' video? Um, I think Tony's story is more going to be closer to like the Zebo one where it's about mm. him specifically. Um, Mark, I wanted to focus on because everybody was like, I mean, it's hard to talk about now because people have seen the documentary. So mm. you understand, you know what I'm saying? But uh, people would always be like, oh, Mark's of Memphis, blah, blah, blah. Duh. But you never really got into like the nitty gritty. Mm-hmm. Like you knew he we went to high school here. But did you know that like his best friends were from Frazier mm-hmm. and they told um, time wise. It didn't actually, he, they told the story off camera that he used to like stay the night at their house and eat like all their cereal and stuff like that. They were yeah. tight like that. <laughs> yeah. um, like, did you know that? So, I mean, that's part of the pressure. What are you going to learn new from Tony? Like, and part of Tony's story is maybe you don't need to learn a ton new. Like mm-hmm. he tells his story a lot. Um, what can you do visually? Um, what can you do where, um, like you and I were talking about. Mm-hmm. So it feels, it doesn't feel long. That's yeah. the best compliment you can get, right? Yeah. Like if something's long and it doesn't feel long. So I think Tony's will fit more like Zebo. Um, and then obviously, you know, Zebo showed the connection of the city in a different way than Mark's. And I think Tony's will yeah. the same. And I think Tony's going to, I expect Tony to uh, eat up the camera a little bit more than Mark did. I think he's going to be a lot more of a ham than, than Mark was. He, he enjoys, uh, <laughs> Mark does not like talking about himself. Right. He said, uh, and, I, and we used it in the announcement of his Jersey retirement. I asked him, and I asked everybody, um, and I'll probably do the same with Tony, like, what is Mark Gasol's legacy? And that was the last question I saved mm-hmm. for the end for Mark. And he goes, I just told you. I didn't like talking about myself. <laughs> you asked about legacy. Right. And I didn't use it in the answer, but the answer was interesting. Like, he talked in detail about um, not listening to, to 
you know, other people, they're not there, work-ins, blah, 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 stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I think – I mean, Tony's going to – Tony's going to talk more. He talks yeah. once a week on Vernon's show. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's not a man who, who's, who's gets lost for words too often either. Uh, something else I wanted to ask you too, Mike, was um, I know that we got we, – we're talking about Beyond Grit, right, which is absolutely incredible, man, the stuff that you do. And it's like you're, you're kind of setting the standard for other teams because I've seen other teams trying to do things the way that you do them. An interesting aspect is when the team was – during the pandemic, the videos kept coming, like when we were, when they were in the bubble – so I was like, damn, my guy is out there in, in you know what I mean, the bubble, whatever. What was that, ex- that experience like? Because you're the first person yeah. I've, that's been over there that I've, I've interviewed about that experience. We, um, I talk about it. Um, I bring it up a lot because I think it was it was an important time for the team, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, we only have, um, shit, probably like uh, two or three of the guys left, um, maybe. But I think, like, establishing it <clears throat> and um, – the guys that were there then taught the next guys because mm-hmm. we, I mean, we worked a lot there. Like the team worked a lot and being able to cover that, be around the team a lot. Um, I think helped me understand the team more. I think it helped them mm-hmm. like understand me more uh, because all, all we had was, you know, I forget what the traveling party was. It was like 33, 43, whatever the number mm-hmm. was. And that was it. Like nobody else was in there and it was just right. kind of us and like, uh, somebody's room a player's room was below mine and like somebody was to the right of me and like we just had this subsection we ate together we fished together at night mm-hmm. um we did that episode where Jonas Valanciunas was fishing with everybody I forgot JV was on that team yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. we got um JV fishing yep that was a big thing we yep. got uh Bass Pro did a bunch of stuff and like they were like everybody was so like especially JV was very happy because he's like, oh, my God, this is, like, everything we need. Mm -hmm. Because when we first got there, it was like you can rent fishing poles. And we're like, well, we got to get, like, some real stuff in here. Mm -hmm. Um, And then we became, like, uh, the big thing where, like, was it Ben Simmons that was fishing with us one night, I think? Um, But, uh, like, Mm -hmm. DeLon Wright, because he was on Mm -hmm. the team before. Um, It was was wild. It was was the closest thing uh, to – we were talking earlier, being at summer school at LSU – where it's like, oh, you see, like, Big Baby walking around. Oh, you see Glenn Dorsey. Mm-hmm. Uh, you see Bat Flynn. Like, it was like uh, it was like being at school um, with, with you know, the best NBA players in the mm-hmm. world. Well, I'm sure that I'm sure that your camera was rolling, a lot of B-roll or whatever, and I'm sure other people's cameras was recorded as well. I always say that that 30 for 30 on the, on the bubble would be fire. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if, like, I know a lot of stories you probably can't tell, but I'm like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good would the, the bubble documentary be? I will say people think it was more interesting than it was. It was <laughs> for our forty days, or I forget how long we were even in there. Yeah. It was it was really uh, it was. I mean, it was there was a lot going on in the world mm. then. Um, so I'm not complaining. Uh, but it was it was relatively boring. Mm. There were card games. There was cornhole. Um, James Harden and Chris Paul and them were playing cornhole with us. Oh, there, was a, there was a cornhole tournament amongst the teams, <laughs> different hotels. Who won? I think our staff. I think Conchar and a member of our staff <clears throat> finished like second or third, but I forget who. Okay, won. honestly, was that, good. that doesn't surprise me in <laughs> <And> the <laughs> slightest. So John Conchar was throwing the ball, Conchar. throwing it backwards. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it was slamming them joints. <laughs> but I mean, like when you do these documentaries and stuff like that, like you look at the Last Dance one, um, they got some good stuff, but a lot of that was like, <laughs> oh, this is footage from thirty years ago. Mm-hmm. That's why it was interesting, right? Like if you watch Beyond Grit, you're getting way more access than yeah. the what man, you saw. So good, man. The yeah. Last Dance, like you're mm. seeing guys mic'd up, you're seeing stuff behind the scenes. Um, so when you're doing a documentary like that, it, it comes down to how well it's produced mm-hmm. and what people say, um, than kind of what you see. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I got one more question for you. I know Kenny has some he wants to ask. You. I'm gonna sit down and be over here drinking water. We gotta talk about this, <laughs> but <laughs> he's gonna be talking a lot more technical stuff for you. He, he's I know Kenny is super excited behind the glass. But um, the question I had was, I know it's hard for me, and I know it's hard for Kenny, covering sports and analyzing sports and creating commentary about sports. I know it's hard to just kind of watch the sport, watch a game without like thinking on that type of level. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Ken, I wonder what it's like for this dude who probably sees the game at a totally different level than how we see it. Like, you're looking at it from a cinematography standpoint. How, does, is that a thing with you at all? Or is this just something I'm assuming that you probably do? Uh, it's, um, 
Yeah, it is difficult. I think the hardest thing is watching other sports documentaries. Yeah, oh, like shit, yeah. that is that's <laughs> yeah. really hard. I get for this garbage off my TV. Man. Well, well, it's all it's more like if I have nothing going on, mm -hmm. and we're not retiring the jersey or it's the off season or whatever. Sometimes it's hard for me to watch it. And there's also yeah. ones where it is, um, no knock on them, but there's certain ones where it's like you're not really invested in the story where you're mm. just, you're just, it's paint by numbers where mm. it's like, here's a basketball player story, blah, blah, blah. Here's a football player story. And it's all feels the same. Those ones are, are really tough to watch. Mm. Um, and I think like this sort of fits with your original question where like, I try not to watch. And I think this helps me. <clears throat> I try not to watch other teams content mm -hmm. and certain people might be like, that's stupid. I don't know. But, like, I get more inspiration, like, watching a, a really good movie. Like, when um, when I was working on the intro video and Beyond Grid at the start of this year, I made a point of, like, taking a break one night and going to watch um, Killers of the Flower Moon. Mm -hmm. and I was like, I want to watch them really high end. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and I'm going to learn more from that than, you know, anything else than scrolling through TikTok and seeing different ideas like uh, some other people will do. Um, and I'll get more inspiration from that or watching like a Stanley Kubrick movie. Like he'll do more tricks like we were talking earlier about lenses and stuff like that mm -hmm. than like somebody else is doing uh, for a team. So I'll, I'll get more inspiration from that. Yeah. I, it's tough for me to watch certain team stuff because it, it all becomes the same. And that's right. – we try to make sure that we're not doing just the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like this collective thought thing. Yeah. But well, so, that's my guy, Mike Blevins. Kenny, get your shit off. Yeah, Please. so who uh, – let's – I want to I wanna go I want to go back towards, like, the whole process, right? Like, uh, the editing process, the the accumulation of, of content as you're kind of storyboarding your idea out, like what you want the documentary to look like. How many hours do you think you put in on that documentary? People have asked me on that. It's, I mean, I think editing-wise uh, is probably at a 1,000 probably. And then yeah, pre-production no. pre interviews and stuff. Um, you With the two ones we've done so far, I've kind of started <clears throat> out with, like, here's the person's story, and then I'll put together a timeline and a Word document, and then in between I'll think of, like, questions, right? And then I'll use that to formulate the questions for each interview subject, right? And then once you get the main person, that's kind of your baseline. You know what they've talked about, um, and you work from there. Um, but then the tough part for me is like, how do you, the tough part when you're doing documentaries is you, I like to stick to sort of a timeline, right? Unless you're bouncing around on purpose, but like, how do you tell the story about Mark's off the court stuff? What, where do you decide to put that in the documentary? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, where do you decide to put in Mark's competitive side and him wanting to win for the city? Like what you put that after 11, you put that after 12, so that was a tough thing. And I think it was the same thing with Zebo. Like in the Zebo documentary, there was a large section about what he did for the people of Memphis, uh, the MLGW, to, uh, paying people's light bills. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Like when, when do you decide to do that? That's the real tough point. Um, because especially here, because all these oh, fans remember yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Like if you do it out of order and you try to trick them. Because y'all saw the lady who, who directly benefited from – Zebo in the last joint, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that just came back to me. Yeah, yeah. There was, um, yeah, but there was a bunch. And then we had um, the kid with, uh, I forget, his, uh, sorry, I forget his name. That The little kid that had Down syndrome that mm -hmm. come to all the yep, games. His guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. That mm -hmm. went viral with Zebo. We we surprised Zebo with him, right? Oh, wow. And that was, a, and when I'm doing the interview, that, that has to be the last question because he's going to walk out in the restaurant. Um, we filmed it at, um, <clears throat> I'm terrible with names, Yo Gotti's Restaurant. Oh, 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 uh, uh, Pri uh, Privé? Uh, Privé, yeah. 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 So he's in the back room. Zebo walks out, and I was like, hey, do you remember that kid? And he's like, yeah. And he says his name. I was like, oh. And then he sees him, and it's like this amazing thing right there. Mm. Oh, that's dope. Um, so, again, that's a timeline thing. Like, when do you decide to use that? Stuff like that. Yeah. The timeline stuff is the, the hardest. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of timeline... Anthony, in the in the movie making world, they have this thing called killing your babies. I don't want to make my right wing conservative friends yeah. upset. Is that they call it killing your babies? That sounds um, like something else that I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call it when in doubt, take it out. There you go. Yeah, like that's that time. Yeah. What yeah, there was, you go. <laughs> when I because here's the problem that you find, Anthony, when you're yeah. when you're when you spend so much time with the footage and you're telling the story, everything is important, yeah. right? But you have to go in 
to kind of cut things out, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one of the most difficult processes in the entire editing process is cutting your babies, killing your babies, like putting something on the yeah. cutting room floor. What was the storyline that you said, man, this is the storyline. I wish I have to cut it, but this is what I wish. And why did you leave Chris Wallace in there? Man, that part, of <laughs> hey, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I'm glad, I'm glad you did. You, you brought that up. Like, bro, you should have put a disclaimer up. You might want to leave <laughs> this might, part. If you're a Grizzly Spade, you might want to leave this part. Yeah, bro. <laughs> um, yeah, I like that phrase, win it out, take it out. I use that for everything because you want – you want to make sure things flow fast, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, if it enters your head, I always think about this. Like, uh, I'll play poker, right? And there's a phrase in in poker, mm -hmm. like, when you decide to leave the. Do you play poker at all? Yeah, I know you. So, about. like, when you decide to leave, mm -hmm. when it enters your head, should I leave the table? You, you get, have to leave the you table. You get out. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Well, as soon as it, no, no, like, debate in your head. So when you're like, should I cut this? Cut it. Um. So that is the tough part. The uh, the original cut, like real original cut, <clears> before <throat> anybody else saw it, talked about. Uh, him in college, the idea of him getting recruited to Mark Calipari being interested. I told you, kid. I told you. Right, right, right. right. Um, Go ahead. And I knew what, I went on no Mandela fiction. Go we, ahead, we, we, so we asked Mark about it, and he was like, I had no interest. Calipari, you know, talked to me, and I forget who's it. We actually talked to Calipari uh, on the red carpet at the Hall of Fame because he was there when Powell was going in, right? Mm -hmm. And we were up there, and the day before or day of, we recorded with Mark. And we talked to him, and there was a real debate of whether Mark was offered a scholarship. Kalapari said he was offered a scholarship. Um, other people, um, Mark wasn't sure. He couldn't remember. Other people were like, no, he didn't. Again, it wasn't that interesting of a story. I think some Memphians might have thought it was interesting, mm -hmm. but it really didn't. Again, like the, the important, what the driving force behind the documentary was, and it was nice that it was um, the driving force behind his speech was the ring. Mm -hmm. Like, why did he get grit and grind in that ring? Um, and he talked a little bit about it in the ceremony. But the point of the documentary was, why did he get grit and grind? Why did those three guys matter to him? Why did Memphis matter to him? Mm -hmm. And, like, whether he was going to college or not, um, really, I really didn't. Mike, I, I hear you, bro. I would have, I would have, as a, I would have much rather. Have known, <laughs> I knew this story anyway that that Calipari had some interest in Mark, right? Yeah. But I would have much rather known how close Mark was to being a tiger, than for Mark and Powell being grizzlies at the same time. I did not want to hear that story at all. That's, did you when oh you heard that God. when they talked about that? Was that new to you too, Mike? Um, so because that's new, that was new to that was new to because the whole narrative was that Powell wanted out of here, like a, him, demanded and out of here. That was not the truth. So Powell, um. Now, y'all would know better than me. Mm -hmm. uh, Pow hinted at, at one point in the interview, something happened the year before, where, uh, and I can't remember if he said Chicago or somebody, not even in the documentary, mentioned there was some trade potentially with Chicago the year before. Um, but I think mm -hmm. my understanding is he, he potentially was interested in leaving the year before, but he didn't think it was happening at that point based on his answers. Yeah. Um, and Chris's answer, because Chris said – I mean, I should know this. I edited it. But Chris said that um, he tried to draft him. And I remember him saying that. And then we started looking through the war room Don't footage. Don't play it back. Don't play it back, man. <laughs> and we Shit. found it. And it was like, oh, wait. And Mark didn't know that. Mark had no idea that he actually tried to acquire the pick. And mm -hmm. I don't know if Powell remembered the phone call that was in there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Powell was adamant about the the 500000 different stuff like that, which was obviously would have been against the CBA. Oh God. And obviously wasn't oh up to, uh, to Chris Wallace. $500,000. Um, but, I mean, like, Chris gave Timmy Allen it probably <laughs> in the 10-day. I mean, Mark, uh, Mark, uh, Mark likes Chris Wallace. Everybody, yeah. uh, I we think all like Powell Chris. does too. I mean, Chris, um, I'll say this, uh, not to pivot off of it, but Chris, uh. like Mark, um, now, Chris works for a different team, so he, it wasn't the exact degree as Mark. There was a lot of, like, we, us. Like, Chris is very uh, proud of what oh, he they accomplished be. here. Yeah, he should be. And I, a lot of the people that were really mm. invested, and you all would know better than me, the real Memphis Grizzly people will always root for this city and the team. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Mark is the apex of that, and then everybody else is kind of below that. Um, but Chris, Chris is up there with them where, you know, their goal would have been – to to get to a championship and some of the moves Chris did y'all got y'all got hella close that yeah. that one year yeah we and got even it. in Tony will talk about it, other people talk about it, that sixteen seventeen um 
where we took the Spurs to six. Like, if we had Tony, mm. you know, maybe we take him to seven. Maybe we win that series. You win that. Okay, I know what you were talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We beat the Warriors like two or three times that year. You would have mm -hmm. played the Warriors in the next round. I think that was the thing about that team. When people talk about, oh, I wish we would have got this player or what if this. Um, championships obviously are the goal. But the story of those four guys in the city, like, I don't – anything short of a championship. Yeah. I, I don't think any – y'all would have traded for that, right? No, 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 not at all. Not at all. Well, Mike, I appreciate you coming out today, man. Kenny, you got anything else, bro? No, nah, man, it's been a pleasure, man. Man, been a dope-ass interview. My, my, my man, Mike Blevins. Y'all know who he is, man. I'll be back for Tony's. I'll, I'll yeah, promise please, I'll come yeah, back. Please, yeah, please come back. We got to get you before these other screws, man. We, <laughs> we got to get you out here first, man, for sure, for sure. My guy, Mike Blevins, man, director of the Marcus Hall documentary and all the other stuff you say, see from Memphis Grizzlies. Anything to look dope, they got Memphis Grizzlies attached to it. Mike probably did, just being real with you. All the other stuff, the the timeout stuff, I don't, know, <laughs> I don't think he got to do it. <laughs> That's my crew, too. That's his crew, man. Don't mess Listen. with him like that, man. Hey, we, make videos, crew, man. we make videos for everybody. You like the – what about Tony's and Zach's acting it's in fine. that rib yeah. video? That yeah. rib video was pretty yeah. entertaining What else Saturday? I like that y'all did? It's, I like the Derrick Rose stuff. Oh, the the Rose uh, – I forget what it was, like yeah. poems or something like that? Yeah, the Derrick Rose the, – the, the Rose Pros joint. Yeah. What about the Super Grizz? Like, there was like a helicopter one or some fire yeah. with Super Grizz? But you, you don't do the stuff like – you don't do the stuff like when Grizz comes out there and like the wrestling stuff and Undertaker and all that. No, we well, I mean we have a game entertainment crew for that, mm -hmm. but any of the pre the post production stuff. Um, so anything that gets, that's got to get edited will go through my. No, team. I ain't talking about the video stuff. I'm talking about like the stuff they be doing. It's like it's the skits, hurt. the skits during it. That and uh, in game stuff arena that, stuff. Yeah, the in game arena stuff. Like the if stuff that everybody in the league does. The like, if you see something that looks like it's edited on the video board, yeah, I know they might do that. Yeah, I ain't talking about it. Yeah, none of the. I'm lives. talking about like the Undertaker with the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like wrestling. Yeah. Did yeah. I miss the? Me too. I'm a wrestling did guy, I miss man. the CM Punk video discussion already? I ain't seen it. You haven't seen the CM Punk video from last night? Uh, oh. Is Grizzly related? Are you talking no, about the AEW the, stuff? The AEW. The I heard about that, but I don't know what they talking about. Yeah. They showed the video. That was all I could see on Twitter. No, nah, I ain't seen that, John. I ain't seen it either. No, nah, but like, uh, what I about to say? Like when they do um, Grizz's birthday and all that. I think we we did something for that. We did a. It was a FedEx partnership. It was like yeah. a mark tied to it. Listen, yeah. I usually know everything that my team does, uh, but I haven't slept a lot in the last month. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, all, I know everything did about a thousand Marcus hours life. of work with that video. What's what did you say? You say you did a thousand hours of work. Yeah, I mean, just on the edit side. I yeah. mean, like, it, damn, that's it, forty-one days, bro. I did the math. Yeah, really. it really, it really, uh, shit. It, it was, it was a lot. I mean, it was the toughest thing. I don't know if y'all are y'all short in time. Nah, bro, time? Keep, going. Okay. keep going. The toughest thing is at the start of it, and that was the thing where I was like, oh shit, did we interview too many people? Because <laughs> it's like thirty. We had like thirty-five interviews, right? Mm. From like. Him in high school, people in Spain, uh, competitors he went against. And it's like, how do you use all of them? And how do you use them so people aren't just repeating the same thing over and over again? Mm. Um, but at a certain point, you do want them to repeat, like to play the right way and different stuff like that. It's like trying to figure out how to use it. And, and, um, and one of the things that did help is I started, I watched, um, I started rewatching The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. Do y'all watch? Have y'all ever seen Hell The Sopranos? Yeah. I ain't never seen it. I ain't gonna lie to what? you. What? Yeah. So, um, Sopranos is one of those good shows where The Wire was the same way, where it's like mm -hmm. everything you're gonna see has a purpose to it. Mm. And you're, it's gonna make you understand a character better, for better or worse. Um, so, I made sure I was watching that. And again, it's a different thing from a documentary, but it got me in the mindset of like, as I'm cutting down these interviews, let's make sure everything matters. So, by the end of it, like you watch it, you could give me three sentences on exactly yeah. who Marcus Saul is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Describe yeah, to a... me. This is my last question, Anthony. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Bro. That this, I got plenty of time. This whole con <laughs> I don't this... want to sit in traffic driving back to downtown. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. You would. yeah, you're on. We're well, close to Germantown Parkway, man. You better get ready for that. <laughs> um, describe to me that when you hit the final cut, the you feeling, hit, bro. and you hit export. How nervous were you? Do you? <sighs> let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Do you ever? I, I struggle with this a lot. Do you ever still feel kind of like an imposter? All the time. There, uh, there's a great quote. Uh, there's a thing I read 
Um, not in a book, so I'm not gonna pretend like I read it in a book. But it was <laughs> a billboard. From a it book. was a billboard. It was a billboard on the it side. It was of an the excerpt from a book. The Facebook post. Jordan Parkway. <laughs> this, this author, and I guess he was famous or something. Um, he was at some sort of dinner, and he was like, "I was at this dinner. I see all these famous people there, and I'm like, what? Why am I invited here? What am I doing here?" And he's just thinking in my head, his head about that. And then this older guy's next to him. And he's like, can you believe this? There's so-and-so here. I can't believe I'm here for this. He's like, I'm thinking the same thing. And he's like, "What? what's your name? And the, the older guy was Neil Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, why the hell am I here? You're on the moon, man. So <laughs> I think everybody, I think Marcus all definitely has imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, I think from the get-go, you know, we, we did a formal offer to him. And I mean, all those guys know they're getting retired, right? But we did a formal special thing, call him up and um, – and offer him, you know, the Jersey retirement this year. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, until probably um, January, I was the only one talking with him during the whole time. And a lot of it was um, Mark's wired like me, where I think if he had his way, he understands it's a great honor, but he would have never had a documentary, never had a ceremony, just because it's so much attention on you, right? Where mm -hmm. people are going to, like your original question, people are going to be saying nice things and stuff like that. Um, and I think part of that was when I talked to him, I was like, don't worry, no throne like Zebos. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I go, large portion of the ceremony, Big I've already 50. talked to everybody, yeah. and everybody's all for it. I go, it should just be the four of y'all yapping. And he was all about it. But, yeah, when I'm doing stuff like that, when I hit export, I hit export, at, it premiered on a Friday at 7. I hit export at, like, 2.30 or 3.00. That day, because we we uh, caught a couple different things we had to change. Damn, you you were up to the last hour. Yeah, because we saw some things in the theater. There were some things where um, in Premiere it does an automated. We paid for a translation, and there was some automated stuff, and it, it screwed up the translation a little bit. So I had to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, but I was like hella anxious, and then I watched it just so I could tweet along with it. Uh, but it's gonna take me a while to watch it again, even if it's with somebody that hasn't seen it. But yeah, I mean that. That stuff's tough. Like I don't know how our players play. I don't know how our players deal with people saying nice things about them. I don't know how they deal with like watching their game afterwards on right. TV or anything like that. I'm sure. Yes, yeah, well, I don't know. If you, are you like that when you put out a tweet? Man, I'm, I'm like definitely that. like that when I put out a tweet. No, like, but hey, I, I let this shit fly. I don't be thinking. About <laughs> I'm constantly worried. Of my <laughs> is there a typo? Or hey, Anthony's a different breed than me and you. Hey, Michael. I get him he, in. Uh, he, he's... I get those sides, bro. I'm like, I'm like Russell Westbrook. I don't care. <laughs> he's yeah, he's I a would... James Harden of. Uh... Uh, I'm gonna get them sides off. <laughs> well, YouTube's also like you can't really fix it once yeah, it's up there. Yeah. It's uh, you can't change it. Like people understand. Like sometimes they're just screw up in a video. You got to retweet it. We do actually. Uh, we don't have to fix ours a, a ton in general as an organization compared to some other places. But like, yeah, I was hella anxious that day. Mm -hmm. And then once it's been over with, whew, I know yeah. why you haven't watched it again, because you're still too close. You're still in editing mode. I'm sure yeah. you're going to rewatch it and, want to change and have it. a list of, I'm going to want to change it, change a bunch. There's still like a Z, but there's one Z bus shot. I can't rewatch it where I, I want a different version, a different angle of him. Uh, when he gets tossed out of the game in the yeah, Clippers yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. The, I wanted to switch up a shot that's like we show I, it a couple times. I want to sh switch it. I was so on I, can't the, watch I was it. on the sixth row behind the Grizzlies bench when that happened. It was we so probably bad. so you got a good. View. Were you at the game too? You think I was? Yeah. yeah. That was so. I was discussing with somebody what is like the top four Mount Rushmore nights at FedEx. Oh, me. I got oh, one God. easy. The the biggest night in the Grizzlies history to me was uh, Zebo. That first year, 2011. No. 11. Game six. I think so. And Zebo was like hitting like crazy middies. The fourth. Like fall away middies. The fourth quarter yeah. crazy and, and the memory I have of it that I always remember, bro, is the dust from the ground towels. It was like yes. a yellow mm -hmm. bomb that got set off of the, It was <laughs> like so incredible, bro, the yep. atmosphere during that year. And Zebo hitting them fall back jump shots. And yeah, that that was what year was the the fight between him and Blake on the ground? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Yep. That that's Round that's gotta be up six. there. That's yep. gotta be way up. So there. I think it's that one. Well, I always thought it was uh, the Clippers one, um, mm -hmm. just because mm -hmm. you had because uh, I hear from people that were at the game and they were like, it felt like the building was levitating, right? Oh, dude. And it's also like Vernon said it in the in the Zebo documentary. It was wrestling in the wrestling town. Yep, like it it's was. the wrestling town outside of like Philly or New York or whatever. Like Memphis is, mm -hmm. 
And Memphis wrestling was known, like, again, we're going down the wrestling path. But for wrestling historians, they were known for, like, crazy shit. Like, crazy gimmicks yeah. of people running in and doing yeah. different stuff. And it's like, these two power forwards are just wrestling on the court. And yeah. then neither are going to get ejected. And the yeah. game's going to continue. But... I think everybody that twenty that Spurs game, like I was talking to people that worked in the organization, and that they were like it was before and after, meaning like w- we were a franchise before that, and then we were a completely different one after that game because yeah, we sure. never won a series. Life for real. So I think the Mark Knight is definitely might be in that just because again the season has been a struggle because of injuries, but the the people were there, the four of them being reunited. Mm-hmm. Um, the Zebo night was obviously very special because it was right after COVID and it was. Packed house and everything. Yeah, the Zebo. And he's just kind of different. Hopefully the Tony night will be like that um, when that happens. But, y'all, is there another night I'm forgetting? Um, Like dope-ass nights. Um, of course, some of this Jaw stuff, man. Like the, Maybe that Minnesota game. The playoff series, oh, yeah, yeah, the comeback. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't in FedEx Forum, though. That was on the road, I believe. Yeah, the that comeback was on the, road. was on the road, but the one where he dunked over what's his name and then he yeah. hit the game winner was yeah. game five at home, I think. I ain't gonna lie, the first time we saw Ja play and was like, oh shit, this yeah. dude is that dude. Like that dude. That's all the time. Yeah, that's one the where Nets, he blocked the Kyrie. Nets game where he blocked Kyrie. Right, exactly. Massive. That was something like that for sure. The Jay Crowder. Yeah, I, I know all that, but all that stuff. That first year of Ja, there's yeah. a, there's a bunch of moments. Even that Warriors. With Ja and them, that Warriors won where Ja was hurt and we we won, beat the Warriors by like 30 at home. In game, I think it was a game five, wasn't it? Yeah. And the we, the we 73 were like point 50. blowout of, of the Oklahoma City was big. Yeah. Beating Milwaukee that year, we blew them out. That was dope. That was dope as hell. I yeah. also think I was watching from afar because I was working for the 49ers then. And I think I had uh, bet. Tickets for opening night that you guys were going to beat the Warriors because there were so many Warriors fans out there, right? Yeah. And I was rooting for the Grizzlies then. Right. I think that game three against the Warriors where Tony Allen, and we'll talk about it in the documentary, mm. is at his apex mm. where people are chanting first team all defense. Yeah. This is like the craziest chant you've ever heard of it. Yeah. Like, I felt like um, that was the peak for Tony Allen. Obviously, y'all going to the conference finals was probably the peak, but that, that had to be a moment where it's like you had this – uh, this team, like the Warriors, had taken over the conscious of America. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, shit, they're down 2 1. We about to snatch this shit, yeah. Um, but yeah, we know how that all played out. <laughs> yeah, for sure. This is my man, Mike Blevins, man. Mike, we appreciate you coming on, man, for sure. We got to get you on again soon, very soon, man. I'll tell you what, for sure. But I'll tell you what, about to take a break when we come back. The three pointer here on the Answer the Same Show. See you guys in a minute. How did you feel about Ashton leaving indifferent or? What, I mean, it's hard to be like fully indifferent. Yeah. For me, if I'm just viewing him as a player and not Penny Hardaway's son, I don't know if he fits this, this, I don't know if he fits Penny's I, style. I'm with you. It is just wild to see Ashton Hardaway in the portal, leaving his dad's program. program. Yeah. If, if, if Ashton's leaving, Everything must be shit behind the scenes. Right. Like, oh, God, this must be a dumpster fire. And, okay, you can have that opinion, but let's also look at the fact that P.J. Haggerty, number two recruit in the in the just transfer portal, here. just committed there. And Dane Danger, who's another top 40 recruit, just committed. Yeah. So it's like, okay, it can't be that right. miserable. Yeah, I think it can be overblown. But I also think that people that are just trying to dismiss it and be like, I don't think there's anything wrong with Ashton Hardaway getting in the portal. I think that's a little short-sighted as well. Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. We talked about Lou Esposito leaving, hitting the portal. Yeah. And boy, (laughs) boy, did Ryan deliver on a a, uh, backfill. Yeah, I mean, we were talking about, like, oh, it's got to be a very specific coach. Like, it's got to be a, a, someone who has D.C. experience, but they also are going to have to find a D-line coach. Like, oh, who are they going to hire? And I think they figured it out. TJ, when we had a full D.C. opening, said, there's no way Nowinski leaves. Why would he? And he seemed correct. A little bit of how this has played out has me questioning whether or not... <laughs> Old Lou was pushed out. Never.
Maybe Ryan got a little win that uh, Nowinski wanted a little flavor of that Memphis barbecue. Said, hey, you guys got any bussies near town? Got on down here. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. So welcome back to the Anthony Sane Show. Shout out to my boy Mike Blevins once again, man. Dope interview, man. Uh, I, lo- I love when guests come on and say, no, man, let's keep this going. I'm having yeah, a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. he was getting us some good stuff, man. Uh, and if you haven't seen the documentary, go check it out. Um, Mike's just doing an incredible job, man. Um, the three-pointer, man. We're talking about three things going on in the world of sports. Number one, man, I don't know a lot about this particular story, um, but I will kind of lean towards you on you for this, Kenny. Um, the Kentucky coaching job, from the way I'm looking at it, seeing nobody want that enough. <laughs> Everybody's turning it down. And I'm, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to hand it to you, man, and I'm going to get off of this. Um, times are just different, bro. The yeah. Kentucky job, like, it don't matter. Like, you can be you can be a super successful coach and, like, take over college basketball and not be at one of those particular schools. Now, UConn is a, is a blue blood. Like, they're a blue blood, right? But they were in the AAC a couple years ago, bro. That team was in our conference a few years ago, and they came out of that conference. Now they're dominating college basketball. If you got the NIL money, you got some swag, all those type of things, mm. you can build a team and, and 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 compete with the Kentuckys of the world. Like the name Kentucky just don't mean the same that it meant four or five years ago. Even you know what I mean? John Calipari will tell you that. And like I think a lot of people are like, if I'm um, if I'm Scott Drew, I'm like, hey man, I'm cool to Baylor. Yeah. And he said that he said that, that he I'm cool said that today. I ain't got to be over there and deal with that bullshit. Like I can be right here and, and win win the, win me one. Yeah, like in Texas, with yeah. a lot of money around him. Yeah, everybody's yeah. like, well, what about Waco? Waco's just boring. Okay, you think that man cares? That man can go anywhere he wants to. What's cool about Lexington, bro? Yeah, bro. What they doing going to the Kentucky Five Kentucky Derby? Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? <laughs> like, shit. <laughs> but yeah, man. So what what are you? Nah, man, it's it's wild to go uh-huh. from you know they, <laughs> uh, you know the first names that were mentioned. I mentioned Brad mm-hmm. Stevens, you know GM. He's they clearly haven't gone after him, or he has told Why them would behind he the scenes. Why the NBA a, a GM job to go fool around with Kentucky basketball? I don't know, man. I just that's what I would try. I'd make them say no to uh-huh. me. But they the name that's been announced now they're going after is a guy by the name of Mark Pope. Um, and oh, Mark that's Pope, where we at now. I know yeah, what it is. Um, former player. Yeah, former player. Where is he at? I it's a black dude, right? I don't. I have no clue. Cause I like, ever had a black coach? Oh, Tubby Smith. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. But yeah, man. Anyway, yeah. So oh, Mark Pope is black, right? BYU. Um, I if he's a BYU, I, I don't doubt it. Doubt it. <laughs> doubt it very I'll be honest with you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that man is white Mark as Pope. white as white can be, man. Um, Who but am no, I thinking about it. I don't know, but he he. Uh, so they're after Mark Pope, and it's like. You you look at a, a a guy like Scott Drew um, mm-hmm. over in Baylor. You you go. He's the guy that you. If this was ten years ago, he absolutely he'd, been he'd have been gone. But you're right though. I think you know the, the calculus for his family was, we we love our life in Waco. We're making really good money. We're in the championship conversation on on a yearly basis. Mm-hmm. Why do we need that drama? Why do we need that pressure? Right. Why do we need that? Is the very reason why Cal left. Man, he's about to be done, and he. You think he wants to spend the rest of his coaching career right. on the hot seat getting shit talked every single day right. by a rabid fan base that's not happy with anything but a championship? Yeah. And it's just like, I get it. I get it. These coaches are like, nah, man, we're good. Man, we're he's going to get we're Patino at. back, man. Get quit playing. Bro. That's the question. The other question is Bruce Pearl. Bruce Bruce has been putting some feelers out. He wants out of Auburn. Um, is Bruce Pearl going to go there? Now, that'll be the upgrade for him. Upgrade for him. I don't know if it's yeah. an upgrade for Kentucky. I don't think it's an upgrade for Kentucky. I think he's a great coach, but yeah. you know, I I said this uh I said this in the Discord. I think if if Kentucky's serious about winning, they'll go after Scott Drew and not not Bruce Pearl. But it seems like Bruce Pearl might be their their option. Other than yeah. uh, unless this Mark Pope thing works that's, out, it's still a splash hire though. Cause you know he's gonna come in there and act a fool. And oh, he's gonna come get out wild. There take blue a shirt, and shit, take man. a shirt off. You know, like he did at Auburn when he got there. <laughs> hey, hey, that was about ten years ago. It ain't it's under what you look like under this shirt now. <laughs> 
My guy. <laughs> it was wild, though. I, I watched the uh, John Calipari uh, introduction press conference mm-hmm. today in Arkansas, and it is wild seeing him in yeah. Razorback, or, uh, Razorback uh, yeah, red. Red, man. for sure. Wild. But number two, man, uh, Nike dropped. I got mixed feelings on all of this, bro, because they dropped the Wimbiana logo, right? It is clean. The video is fire. It, but it don't look like – yeah, it's dope concept. <laughs> but it don't look like – that doesn't look like a – Players basketball logo. It looks like some type of Nike basketball, like just a brand Foot Locker like thing. A, yeah. Like you know what I mean, like House of Hoops type stuff. It don't yeah. look like something that's attached to a player, right? It, I think it's a dope logo. I'm not saying it's not dope. It's clean. Um, it is kind of it fits Wimby. I get that whole thing. Uh, so they dropped the logo, and then the concept for the shoe comes out today. I'm like, man, if y'all don't get this Yeezy. Man. Pod ass. <laughs> I'm like, man, that best oh. looks like a foot injury waiting to happen. A rolled ankle waiting to happen. Yeah. A yeah, seven some foot AI design. No, nah, yo, yo, ASS to the some, <laughs> somebody ASS to the design that joint. It did not. It looks like I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. No, nah, bro, I ain't feeling that at all. And I doubt. I don't know. I ain't feeling that at all. No, nah, it. I, I thought it, it looks like a damn alien pod. Like it looks like a. And I think there's cap too talking about this AI design because because I tell my AI design to make a shoe, it don't look like that. It must look like. I don't know. What does that even mean, though? Like, what is AI design? Fun. How did they design it? Like, what what were the parameters that the human had to put in place to, to make put, it look like that? You remember the Stephen Adams graphic you did? <laughs> <laughs> Angry white man, muscles, beard, yeah. long hair, seven foot five dude <laughs> looks over. The, I'm sure they put alien in there. You know what I mean? Alien technology meets Air Max <laughs> meets basketball shoe. They probably put all that type of stuff in, but I'm not a fan of how it looks. It just looks like something he's going to tear his shit up in. 100%. And, and, and when they put Victor Wimbiana in, they probably sc- scoured the globe from the internet. It was like, um, that dude's probably going to get hurt one day. <laughs> they probably said. Man. <laughs> That's the thing about AI, man. Like, it knows. It goes up there and finds all that type of stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I don't know. Not a fan. But but I ain't going to lie. I thought, Anthony, I thought Anthony Edwards' shoes were ugly as shit when I first saw them. Those joints are grown on me for sure. So I don't know. As, I don't think as has shoe. the player. The player has grown on you too. I'm, I'm gonna tell you another shoe that I thought was rubbish, but I would put them bitches on. Can I ain't gonna lie to you. Please don't say it. We the did book one. Our <laughs> book one. Our fir- one of our first videos we ever did together was you <laughs> trashing about the, the book. Books. Hey, I would put those bitches on. Stop it. Gabe wants some. Stop it. Gabe wants to like play in, play in those for his basketball season. Like he wants to play in the book one. I said, no, so you not. will be wearing Jaws or LeBrons. Like you ain't wearing nothing. No damn book ones. But them, them joints are clean. Like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like, just, just throw on, like, whatever. Oh, yeah. The book ones will, will be on my feet, bro. <laughs> oh, man. No, I still can't rock on them. Nope. You seen them jobs looking, about to drop, though, huh? Them, them two tone, like, Easter the, colors, like the, the, the pastel. Neon, the the yeah. orange and yeah. green. Woo, you sent me a yeah. picture of them. I'm just, I'm just gonna drop uh, Friday. Tomorrow, I believe. If I ain't mistaken. Today. Uh huh. It's coming out, to, coming out on Friday. Friday. Yeah, today. When, yeah, right now, man, you it's know probably sold out. It's probably sold time. out already. Probably sold out already. By the time y'all watching this, but yeah, I might have grabbed them joints for sure. Gabe, Gabe, be getting mad at me. She be like, "Did I see you getting read up with the jaws?" I've, I've only got five pair. Like, you, Gabe, you got every damn pair. Uh, I got damn kid man. size. Like, but if he, but if he ever see me with a pair, he ain't got a new pair. He be yeah. feeling away. Feeling some kind yeah, of way for sure, for sure. Number three, man, OJ Simpson uh, passed away. Y'all just going crazy. These folks getting their jokes off. Um. Mm. Yeah, man, I don't really have much to say other than OJ Simpson, of course. Um, if you're if you're forty, if you're you know fifty and up, you know him as you know one of the greatest football players of all time. If you're my age group and younger, forty probably forty four, forty five and younger, you know him as being part of one of the most publicized uh, murder trials. Murder trials yep. You know what I mean? Ever. And I remember in school, man. Um, oh yeah. When I was in high school, maybe. Yep. Maybe ninth grade. I remember being. I remember ignorantly. Probably cheering for OJ Simpson, right? Because just being real, brothers don't get off. You know what I mean? And I remember cheering for their brother to get off in that trial as a 13, 14 year old, however old you are, uh, freshman year of high school. And um, I, I look at it now as a grown man, like, and it's like, man, that dude literally murdered his wife. Um, and I, I know he was, she was allegedly cheating on him or whatever, but he murdered his wife, and that's also his kid's mom. And then not just did he get off, but he wrote a book basically saying, it. yeah, I did that shit. If I did it. Yeah. Ugh. No, he basically he did it. You know yeah. what I mean? And he's um, kind of like the same stuff that we kind of knocked the Rittenhouse kid about, about how 
course, he was O.J. Simpson before any of this stuff happened, but how he's kind of had another career based off of the lunacy he's done, mm. like just kind of publicizing himself for, yeah, I, I committed a crime. I was acquitted. Y'all can't double jeopardy me. So, you know, I did it, basically, is what he's been doing. Um, I don't really have much more to say, man. It's just like I just remember looking at this whole thing through a different lens when I was a kid and how I look at it now. But uh, he's he's a pretty dastardly dude, and a lot of people are kind of getting their shit off about OJ today uh, as he passes away from cancer at age 72, I believe. You got 76. It, 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 yeah, 76. Any any final thoughts on yeah, the juice? Yeah, uh, it's tough, Kevin? man. I mean, obviously, I'll say this, and I think he would agree with me, cancer. Right. You know, like, cancer's a bitch, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, I hate that, but it couldn't happen to a better guy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, honestly, like, it's just... Yeah, I, I think your your analogy with Rittenhouse is is a perfect analogy, right? Like it's it's a it's a situation where this guy has literally stayed in in the public eye by constantly putting himself out there as like, hey, I'm about to go, I'm about to tell the truth about Nicole, right? Yeah. Like I'm about to tell the truth about it now. Here's mm -hmm. here's my book. Here's this mm -hmm. this interview that I've done. You know this kind of stuff, and it's just like, man. And I want to say that like. Two people was, lost their lives, yeah. man. Yeah, I was listening to Jason and John's show, and I might have misunderstood what Jason was saying. But it sounded like Jason was saying that he was he was married to, like, his high school sweetheart or some lady that came up with him. And he left her and upgraded and got with this lady, in his mind, upgraded. And then she caught her, he caught her cheating. And then he killed her and this dude. It wasn't, so the... Or something like that. Yeah, the um the guy's name who was with her was Ron Goldman. The I remember that. The, the, from what I... From what I've, gathered um and i'm i'm not a historian on on the oj mm -hmm. simpson case but um he was a waiter at a restaurant that nicole had been at that night mm -hmm. and she had left her sunglasses and he was bringing them back to her at her house so he wasn't cheating wasn't cheating damn yeah but i don't but but i am oj yeah that's, that's crazy you it, one of the things that you know about domestic violence and not to take this to a, mm -hmm. a real serious level but one of the most dangerous times for women is when they're about to leave a domestic violent situation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and that's that's based on kind of if you talk if you listen to people that were close to her she was in the midst of leaving mm -hmm. leaving oj mm -hmm. and he did what he did yeah obviously he's been proven or or yeah. <laughs> adjudicated not guilty but come on man that's one of those situations that you hate social media went around then. Oh, because we would, we would have, that case probably would have been looked at totally different. Because I remember as a kid, like, right. not knowing none of this stuff you're talking about now. And, like. They have wrongly got, they've gone after this dude just because he, yeah. I yeah, I remember it's like, yep. I'm pulling for the black dude because I'm yeah. tired of seeing black people go to jail. Because it was around Rodney King. The it Rodney a, King situation. It was around, happened. yeah. The the police officers have been, had been, uh -huh. have been found not guilty as well. Mm -hmm. And everybody, like, we're like, we got damn video of what happened to that guy. Right. <laughs> like, you got video and you're, mm -hmm. and you're saying he's not guilty. The, right. These guys are not we, guilty. We, we crown, we crown a weird king during that, during that situation for sure, man. Um, for sure. So I, I kind of wish we had, we were in different times. And I wish I I wish I saw that O.J. Simpson trial mm. through a, through a different lens than the one that's presented to me uh, by just regular old the news or just people talking. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. but tough. yeah, man. But yeah, about to take a break, bro. When we come back, inside the same brain. Here, this is a good one. I want to see. I really want to get your thoughts on this one, man. Uh, it's gonna be sponsored by Creative Sig. We'll see you guys in a minute. Former Memphis Tiger, um, former Creighton Blue Jay, uh, Jonathan Lawson. Didn't play many minutes at either place. <laughs> no? no. I like Jonathan, though. I wish he would have stayed around last year. I felt that way, too, because I think he really had some of those moments where you were like, he's got the length, he can handle the ball, he, he can, can shoot. shoot, he can pass the ball. And but, it, but it's just never really materialized. So my one big pause, I don't know if he's really someone that you want to pursue as a scholarship player when you have so many holes I'll say this. to fill. He's one of, he's probably the most athletic Lawson. Oh by far. Yeah. Definitely. So like definitely. he can run the floor. Yeah. Um yeah, I, and I think he's got a little bit of upside defensively that you could probably unlock. You just gotta get him in the right place at the right time. I would like it. I would not mind it in the slightest. I 
Tune in to On the Bluff with Christian Fowler and Gabe Kuhn every Tuesday at 12 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. I, I don't. That's why worst. I'm not joking. Our games would be three hours and 15 minutes. It is the night. worst. But if we're. I had what headphones on. The but I hell heard that was that. For many of walls. Those are definitely gunshots, and I, I hear cars still, squealing off. Still occurring. Wow. All right. Um, wind shares not looking great there. Is that literally still happening? Still happening. Wow. Jesus so we need Christ. To be concerned. <laughs> How many shots is that? I'll lay low for a while. That's at least two dozen shots. At least. Let's Speaking of hurt. a volume shoot. <laughs> Khalif <laughs> Battle is outside. Khalif. Don't put that on Khalif hey, Battle. Maybe Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, our, it's, it's in our I'm name. just kidding. The That's jokes are all there. Sorry. The jokes are all right. there. Tune in to Tigers Untapped with TJ Willis and Trey Lasley every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. At Create a Sig, our top priority is to provide the best customer service experience as possible while offering the largest variety of vape supplies, legal THC products, and smoking accessories. Our trained sales associates are here to assist any and all customers to help them find the best products available. With our daily deals, weekend deals, loyalty rewards program, and our punch card program, there are tons of rewards to earn to help our customers save plenty of money along the way. Check out one of Creative Sig's four locations across the greater Memphis area and come visit us. All right, y'all, welcome back to the Anthony Sainz Show, man. Shout out to my guy, Mike Blevins, one more time. Uh, make sure y'all check out the, the Marcus Hall documentary. I'm sure y'all have seen it. Uh, but inside the same brain, man, we were talking about something. It's just randomly on the brother mind, man. Typically, when I get down with my good people at uh, <laughs> Crater Sig, man, Crater Sig, four of your locations Madison Avenue and McLean. Check them out. That's the location you'll see me at. Matter of fact, you're going to see me there for real, man. On 420, <laughs> you're going to see your boy up in that joint, man. We're going to do a little meet and greet for y'all, man. 3 to 5 p.m., 420. Come as you are, no judging. Y'all know how it's going down, man. Bring some for your boy if you want to. We can. Hey, we might have some uh, uh, Sane Asylum Delta Eight packs ready. Yeah, for some we might have too, to, we might have to do a little giveaway or something. I don't tell them what we might be on, man. But it's gonna be a meet and greet. Kenny, you'll be there, right? Yes. Kenny will be there. I'll be there. Try to get some other friends to show up, man. It's a day of celebration, man. Four twenty. Come hang out with your boy, man. Get the Delta Eight pack. Bring some. Bring some. Some D9, some D10, whatever you got, man. Just bring this shit up there, man. We'll figure it out. Let's have some fun, man. We'll figure it out, man. Just mix it all in together. <laughs> Just mix it all in together. We're going to have some fun on 420. Now, I'm going to let you know. By the way, I have I have um, absolutely um, licensed the phrase weed zero. Like, that's that's pretty yeah. good, man. Weed zero yeah. is pretty good from last show. We talked yeah. about the Delta 8 being weed zero. Weed zero. Come get that's you some weed zero, man. Some diet, good. some diet weed. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to let you know. By three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm a, I, hey, I'm I'm pre gaming. As a matter of fact, last year, me and a friend of mine, uh, me and her, we get high all to get together all the time. When uh we started last four twenty, we started we we were eating Wheaties for breakfast, <laughs> bro. We, was, <laughs> bro, we, <laughs> we started super early, man. I'm talking, we had break we 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 took an edible and had breakfast and. Well, high literally all day long. So between 3 and 5 p.m., ain't no telling what version. You might have come get me. <laughs> I'll be there to drive you home. Ain't no telling what version me you going to get by that point, bro. I'm going to be, hey, I might not remember nothing. But, yeah, we are having that meet and greet at Crater Sig yep. on uh, 10 North McLean. Is that the number? 10 North McLean. 10 North McLean. Y'all yep. come check it out. Uh, 3 to 5 p.m. It's a Saturday, man. You ain't got to go to work in the morning. So, man, blaze up with your boy. Get the Santa Salem Delta A pack. What a nicotine pack for, my, for all my real knickers out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep saying it until uh, to <laughs> Greatest C. Exams up to Until Chris calls Maybe we like, don't want to call it. <laughs> uh, hey, man, listen. Um, 
<laughs> How do you spell niggers in this case? <laughs> Can you spell that out? Can you spell that out for me? We want to put it on the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for all my real niggers out there. Hey, listen, man. Um, about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, maybe, maybe we could get to say something else. <laughs> hey, what a Chris is like. You know, Chris is a cool dude, right? Uh, hey, man, cool. what's going on? You, you a Delta A guy? You are you a knicker? <laughs> wait, wait, what? Oh, oh. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, you gotta stand next to him and be like, "Hey, bro, it's all good. It's all good. It's no, all I'm good. not. Don't be out there on his own." <laughs> are you here for Delta Eight or are you a knicker? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, man, it's sad to say, Braid. Uh, Ken, this is what's been on my mind, man. Not particular, not because it's, I'm going through this, but I just kind of see these kind of situations a lot. I, can um, I, just, I do wonder sometimes when you bring these to the to the table, mm-hmm. what's going on in your head, man? man like, what's happening in your life? It's to, the it's the D eight, man. Okay, I, I just go. Right. And what I do now is I write stuff down. Like, okay. Yeah. But I had these wild thoughts across my mind. I'll write this shit down. I like so it. I, I can use this for the show, man. Yeah, you could. <laughs> so I write it down. So I was thinking about how, like, you know how you 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 meet a girl you're dating, right? Yep. Y'all get together. And y'all are, y'all a couple. Y'all official. Y'all being exclusive. And you meet like her friends, right? Or her family becomes your friends, and all these type of things. Right? Her family might become your family. What do you do with those friends once you and that girl break up? Like, what happens with those relationships? Like those. Relationships that you, you didn't know these people before you met her. Right, 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 right. And but they're her friends, but mm. not they're your friends too. Whether those are, are girls, guys, uh-huh. whatever. How do you, how do you handle it? Well, and this is I say this, and this is just me, mm-hmm. right? Like I'm saying, this is how I handle it. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not prescribing this is the way it should be handled. But, right. But this is the way I handle it. Um, or have handled. I've been married for happily married for 14 years. I don't have mm. friends anymore. But right. I don't have like, and I think we've discussed this before. Like, I don't really invest a lot of my energy into relationships that aren't meaningful um, in my day to day life. Mm-hmm. And so, because of that, I don't have a lot of people that I would consider to be like really close friends, mm-hmm. right? I got a few. You're one of them. Mm-hmm. You're you're one of my really close friends. Mm-hmm. Um so for me if if there are relationships that are just literally based off of a romantic relationship that I'm in, that's how it got started. More than likely how I would have handled it back in the day is just hey man, I, they're not my friend. like we're not we're not we don't it's not like we're not cool. We just don't talk. Like yeah. we're not you're, you're not in my life anymore. Like I don't I don't need that. I'm not going to invest a lot of time into those kinds of relationships. Mm-hmm. My my thing man like I'm just thinking back on girls I've dated, right? Like I've met her friends and I'm cool with them and they may have guy friends or even family members or stuff that I may be cool with. I can't really think of any that I'm still connected to at all. Like I is I kinda, it I kinda, is it a respect factor? Like is it a I, I I'm not going to like that relationship was started because of your your partner, you, me and right. you and that partner are no longer together. So, so I ain't really gotten to so so in terms. But of, what would you say if you were though? Like I, I've had I've had girls who they're kind of the girls who once you break up they still kind of want to attach to keep some type of attachment to you or your friends whatever. I've had girls like that. Really? That. Mm-mm. I knew that's how they got down, but I didn't want to go that way with them. Yeah. But, um, because I typically, like, for girls you dated, like, do you still, are you still cool with them? Like, are you still, like, friends with girls you have been your exes with them? Nope. I don't think I, exes. I think I'd be good on it. Not 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 because, like, I feel away, but just to kind of avoid this type of stuff. Like, to avoid, I don't really yeah. want to be cool with your people like that. Nah, like, I, like, my ex-wife, right? Right. Like, my her sister, I'm cool with her. Probably more cool with her than I am my ex-wife. <laughs> I'm cool with her sister. And, like, her daughter's my niece. They're still my niece. I'm still Uncle Anthony and all that type of stuff. Um, I don't have any dealing with Stephanie's mom and dad too much. But um, I don't know, man. Because I, cause I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I've – here's another thing, too, man. Like, as an adult, I got married pretty young, right? Right. And then when I got divorced, my ex-wife didn't really have a lot of friends like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Period. That makes sense. And so, but girls I've been dating now, it ain't been lasting long. Like any girl I've called my girlfriend, the last, the longest it's lasted is like a year, year or so. Right. So I don't really have like, and I might see, I, I've seen, I've, I've seen girls that have been like friends 
of my of exes I've had. I had one girl I dated, man, and her friends were like, you made me realize my friend may not be who I think she is. I said, what do you mean? And she was like, yeah, the, us and the girls, we've been talking. And she's always had these stories about dudes that, like, like we broke up and it was his fault. She was like, you made me think maybe it's her fault. Like, Interesting. <laughs> like like her, 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 her and her girls came to me and was like, yeah. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. I, I, um, if I'm going to invest time into a relationship with somebody, mm -hmm. it's, I'm, I'm going to be an open book, right? Like I'm mm -hmm. going to be an open book with that person. So in that moment, especially if you're, you know, in the midst of a breakup with a partner, that that's going to be a part of our, the narrative that we, that we talk about, right? Like that we, mm -hmm. if, if you want to be involved in my life, like we're going to have to have those kinds of discussions, the people that I'm close to, we're right. going to have to have those kind of talks, mm -hmm. right? Like what, what I'm feeling, what I'm dealing with, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and I think that just really puts, especially if that, that relationship was built out of that partnership to yeah. begin with, yeah, yeah, that puts that person in a really weird position, right? Yeah. Like, and so for me, it's like, if, and like I said, this has been such a long time ago for me that I kind of have a hard time remembering what, how it mm. would have been handled, but I just, I'm just of that mentality of like, mm. if you're out of my life, then that portion yeah. of my life, I can compartmentalize that and move it to yeah. the back and move forward. There was, a, right? there was a girl I dated and she had a friend that was a guy, right? And me and him got cool. And when me and her broke up, like I, I communicated with him and let him know, hey, we broke up. And I, I might see him like on social media or right. I might text him about something funny. That, like I might see him out somewhere and I might speak to him, but I don't, like I don't want, I don't want. I'm, I'm not gonna keep because I've, I've dated some weird girls who like to keep those type of connections, right? Like they want to yeah. keep you within arm's length. No, I'm straight. No, I'm good. And it's like I don't really want to be friends with you because, like, I saw elements of you in dating that weren't friendly. So yeah. I don't want to be friends with you. You know what I mean? So right. it it, it, it kind of question maybe question the type of person you are. So I don't want to be cool with you still. Let me let me kind of take this in a different direction yeah. for a second. How as somebody who is dating in a dating relationships mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you, how would you handle a young lady being in your life, a, a woman being in your life mm -hmm. who's best friends with a guy? Somebody that's, that's a whole nother inside the same brand. Um, Maybe we can save that for later. I, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's say that for, what's today? Thursday? Thursday. That's going to be Tuesday joint, man. Okay. Relationship advice with Sane and Kenny, a a.k.a. Inside the Sane Brain. Like, so we'll, we'll tease it for next yeah, time. Yeah, sponsored by our good friends at uh, Creative City. Would you be okay with dating a girl that is... Cliffhanger. There you right go. Right there. Cliffhanger. We'll talk about that Tuesday. What's going on, everybody? This is Anthony Sane of the Anthony Sane Show. Here to tell you guys about Creative City. Creative City is a smoke shop located here locally in the city of Memphis. Four awesome locations throughout the city. I'm a big fan of the location on Midtown and off McLean and Poplar. Go check them out, y'all. They've got everything you need as far as your nicotine needs, as far as your Delta 8 needs. they got all of that, y'all. Just go check them out. they got the St. Asylum package, which you can go get different varieties of things on the nicotine side and on the Delta 8 side. Mix those things up. You can come out with a great package. The St. Asylum package is there at Credit Seed. Let me tell y'all some more about Credit Seed, though, guys. Um, they strive to provide top-notch customer service, quality products, large varieties of nicotine, uh, and legal TAC products as well, customer service, loyalty, and punch card reward programs. They offer fantastic rewards from 50-cent bottles of juice or salt nick disposables to 25% off an entire transaction, all earned by making purchases at any Creative Sig location. The staff members are ready to help you and find the perfect products to get you started on your vaping journey and ensure you have all the knowledge to do it like a pro. Mention code word VAPE901 for a one-time 15% discount off all your entire transactions at Creative Seed. I'm telling y'all, go check them out. Great people, super nice staff. Go get the same asylum package, y'all. I'm telling you, just go get you straight, man. Just go get you right. Go check them out at Creative Seed. Hey, that's going to be a good conversation because I can, I, can, I can take y'all somewhere on that shit. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. I can excited. take y'all somewhere on that for sure. But yeah, man, for my man Kenny Stubbfield behind the glass, for my man Mike Blevins, like I said, if you haven't seen the Marcus Saul documentary, check it out. Uh, uh, Beyond Grit, new episode dropped today as well. Check that out. We'll see y'all guys next time. Like I said, mark your calendar, man. 420.
Pray to Sig, 3 to 5 p.m. Come check it out. A little quick meet and greet. We'll be there for, for two hours. Myself, try to get some other guys from Bluff City Media to come out as well. Some of my other friends, he's going to just sit up there and just do. Tell Chris we coming, man. I, I'm probably going to be under the influence of something. So uh, let them know that we're going to be up there. We're going to have a good time. Let's get it. Celebrating 420. Well, we'll see you guys next time. And we out. Thank you for listening to The Anthony Sane Show. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a rating and a review wherever you download your podcasts. Also, like and subscribe to Bluff City Media's YouTube page. For comprehensive coverage of Memphis sports, head over to www.bluffcitymedia.co and find out how you can become an insider. We will see you back here next week.